Good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Josephine Franklin, and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. Our topic today is redesigning principal preparation through strong university district partnerships. Following are a few technical notes for information to assist, to assist you with the webinar. If you have a technical problem during the broadcast, please call Zoom support at the toll-free number typed in red, 888-799-9666, extension 2, and provide today's webinar ID that you see typed in red, 461-366-716. As you participate in today's webinar, we invite you to expand the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag NASSP webinar. We're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash principles. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be available as well as the PowerPoint on NASSP's website within 24 hours at nassp.org slash webinars. We are pleased to have with us today, Dr. Timothy Drake, Assistant Professor and Project Director for University Principal Preparation Initiative, referred to oftentimes as the UPPI at North Carolina State University, Brandon Garland, Innovation Officer, Johnson County Public Schools, Dr. Robert Corley III, Associate Vice Provost for Academic Affairs and Project Director, University Preparation University Principal Preparation Initiative, Virginia State University, and Dr. Tracy Weston, Director of Professional Development, Enrico County Public Schools. During the webinar, the presenters invite your questions. Please submit them using the chat box on your webinar panel. We will respond to as many questions as time permits. If we run out of time to answer all questions, we will respond by email following the broadcast. And with that, I thank you all for being with us today. And Robert, I'm going to turn the program over to you. Well, thank you, Joe, for that wonderful in introduction. Um, and I wanted to say a good afternoon to everyone. Our goal today is to share how great things happen when university and district partners combine. We want to share what the transformative experience are like for both university and districts. For example, we'll talk a little bit about our culturally responsive and trauma-informed concept, but more importantly, how both, or more importantly, how both can impact the quality of learning that our children receive. I start off with a quote today, which comes from Nelson Mandela, which says, the best way to test the soul of a people is to see how they treat their children. And that's one of the commonalities that all of us share, that at the heart of everything we do, we're student-centered. We also want to thank um, NASSP for this wonderful opportunity. A special thanks goes out to the Wallace Foundation for their strong support and leadership. And a special thanks to all of the teachers for everything that they do to help prepare the future leaders of tomorrow today. So now I want to give a, a quick introduction just to talk about the initiative. The Wallace Foundation uh, selected seven universities and their state and district partners to participate in a new $47 million initiative. The University Preparation Program builds on 15 years of Wallace supported research and experiences about what makes for effective principals in their pre-service training at universities. The initiative seeks to explore how university programs can improve this training 
so it reflects the evidence on how best to prepare effective principles. These insights will be shared to benefit the broader field. Wallace was interested in finding university programs that serve districts with large numbers of disadvantaged students whose schools could particularly benefit from effective school leadership. And after a competing selection process that included site visits and a review by the Wallace staff and experts in state policy and education, the foundation selected Albany State University in Georgia, Florida Atlantic University, North Carolina State University, San Diego State University, the University of Connecticut, Connecticut, Virginia State University, and Western Kentucky University. So when you look at the work that we've completed, it really is a partnership between the school divisions and the universities. And we know through research that our principals require high quality practical training experiences to be successful in their positions. And what we found that is that the university programs have had difficulty keeping up with the pace and the demands of the principalship. We went through a quite a rigorous program called Quality Measures in which the district partners for the Virginia State team included Henrico County Public Schools, Sussex County Public Schools, and Hopewell City Schools came together to look at Virginia State University's principal prep program to see where we felt as district partners that the program could become more robust and could include those practical experiences that would prepare principals for the position. As you know, the principal position is often done in isolation and it is time, we need to have time to prepare and support our leaders. The quality measures program was a time of building trust, building relationships, and there was quite a bit of vulnerability, including in building those relationships. It was time for honest conversation as we looked at each course and the demands of each course. Virginia State was open to suggestions. We looked at the timely concerns that were occurring in the school divisions and also at that proactive approach to inviting our university partner to be with us during the school year as we bring our principals together for professional learning opportunities. Now this work was based on five things from the field. Uh, it draws on four reports commissioned by Wallace to gain greater insight into the views of university-based training for aspiring school leaders. American Association of Schools for Teacher Education, School Superintendents Association, AIR, and UCEA. To summarize, they identified five things which included, one, that superintendents across America weren't necessarily satisfied with the product. Two, that universities felt that they could do a better job. Three, that the level of engagement between universities and districts was at a minimum. Four, that the current curricula and internship experiences did not necessarily resemble the day-to-day -day jobs of the principal. And five, that the states had not leveraged their role to create the uniform and holistic change that occurred. So again, the goal of this was to say, how can university preparation programs working in partnerships with high need school districts, exemplary preparation programs in the state improve their training so it reflects the evidence on how best to prepare effective principals. Now I'll turn it over to my colleague, Tim. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's good to be with you. Unfortunately, Brandon Garland, who is part of um, Johnson County Public Schools and one of our district partners was unable to make it. But fortunately for us, we have Sylvia McGehe, who represents the Northeast Consortium. And I'll have Sylvia introduce herself in a minute. Um, but what I thought I would do to build off what uh, Robert and Tracy introduced was to discuss uh, the scope of this grant and how we as different universities engaged in the work in building out these partnerships. So the first goal of the grant was to develop and implement a high quality course of study. So what we decided to do with our district partners was 
building off of the national standards, the PCEL standards, and uh, as well as our own North Carolina state standards, we wanted to make sure that our district partners felt invested in the type of program that we would build. And to do that, we decided to create uh, and use a design thinking process to engage our partners in describing what an effective administrator did and looked like, their dispositions and skills uh, in their own district context. So I'm gonna turn it over to Sylvia who participated in that to describe that process. And from that, we results in this graphic you see on the left, which is our program model. So Sylvia. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Tim mentioned, um, I am one of the district partners with the Northeast um, Consortium. Within the consortium, we have 13 um, districts to make up the one um, Northeast Consortium. It is a high needs area. And one of the challenges that we face is um, hiring and retaining high quality uh, leaders, school leaders. And so when we embarked on this process, I had just completed my MSA and rather was an, a, an assistant principal. And so when we, just, we started the design process, um, there were multiple um, individuals that came together from the three uh, different partners, as well as from NC State at different levels within the school system um, to think about what does it take to be an effective school leader. And so drawing on our experiences and looking at the dispositions of what is it that we want in terms of we want to make sure it's equity focused and building um, relationships. And as you look at the graphic, you'll see that we have those two big anchors on the outside, but within those anchors, what we know is a leader has to have heart and then branching out for, from there, you know, what are the dispositions in those four core or key areas of leading with vision, um, being a quality leader, having an innovation um, lens, as well as leading to empower others. And so we brought all of that together um, to help design the coursework and embed all of those dispositions within the coursework. Excellent. Yeah. And so what that really did was create a sense of buy-in from the district partners where this was our program model. So as program faculty, we then built out and developed our principal program guided and anchored in these um, standards, as we called them, that the districts help co-construct. And so from that, you can see from our three partners, uh, the Northeast Consortium, we've been working there for the last decade. And so in 2020, we're going to start a new cohort there. But currently, we're starting year two with the Wake Principal Leadership Program and the Johnson Principal Leadership Academy. Those are our district partners. So Robert, if you could do the next slide. Um, as part of this work as well, and I know this is about forming strong university district partnerships, but in addition to that, we're working at the state level uh, to make sure that we can promote high quality princi principal preparation and training. So just a briefly highlight these areas and I'll turn it back to Virginia State. Um, but the Principal Fellows Program is a grant uh, or is a scholarship loan forgiveness program uh, that operates across many campuses. And this has allowed us to work with our sister universities across the state to help them develop out and build out their program. And as they work with their district partners, we're currently revising our state standards to be updated based on the PCEL standards. And we've also developed a statewide leadership development dashboard, which will roll out this fall, which allows all our districts across the state, as well as our um, university to learn and uh, to have a sense of the type of leaders in their districts, or for us, our graduates, what positions they hold, what histories they have, and how they're doing in the job. So all of these things are helping to facilitate at both the state level and the district level stronger partnerships, which is building out a stronger leadership model. So in a very similar fashion um, to North Carolina State University, we all established relationships, we engaged with each other, we were able to determine focuses, and we were able to sustain the relationships. One of the things that we highlighted though when you look at what actually happened when you look at those small things in order to create change to build consensus we started with some early wins so during our first and second year 
My team created a logic model to help guide our process in the theory of change. We conducted a, a quantity measures assessment, which is through the Education Development Center, and we'll talk a little more about that. Um, we worked together to redesign the university's principal preparation program, but this was with district level input. Our district began expiring leader academies. So when you think about the impact on the entire learning continuum, not just aspiring leaders, but aspiring leaders, uh, you have your formal piece when they go into the academic program, you have the continued development that occurs for existing leaders. And we also piloted Virginia's first leader tracking development center. So what's exciting about the work that we're doing is that while we're working with Virginia State University in the preparation program, we're also looking at districts as how we support our teachers who are aspiring to enter the principal pipeline and those who are currently serving as assistant principals and principals. It's important that we have targeted professional learning to support the growth of our leaders that impacts teacher retention and impacts student achievement because we know according to research that our principals have the second greatest impact after our teachers. So we have worked together as a team, as a partnership with our university and our district partners to make sure we're collaborating to meet the need of our leaders, meets the needs of our leaders. And that's not done in isolation. That is done through a true partnership of sharing ideas, sharing resources and growing and learning together. And with the work of the Wallace Foundation, that's not just limited to the seven universities and the UPPI. Through the Wallace Network of Leaders, we have access to other school divisions and universities in the Wallace Network. So we are continually growing and expanding our capabilities and our resources to support our school leaders. And, and one of the things that helped bind us um, in this partnership was we had a common understanding. And so from the very beginning, we realized that we all had at the center the desire to improve student achievement. But because universities and districts sometimes have different drivers, they have different strategic goals, sometimes they see things from different lenses. And so the logic model, which included our inputs, activities, outputs, outcomes, and then the impact, um, which was the creation of an exemplary national model for culturally responsive and trauma-informed principal preparation, that was a, a, a vehicle that we use to one, keep our focus, keep our direction, and to make sure that the outcomes were consistent for all. Quality measures, which we mentioned before, for us was a, a very pivotal point. Uh, can you imagine a university inviting a district in to help review its curricula and its clinical experience. So we benefited from EDC's quality measures assessment, which was developed by Cheryl King, which highlights several domains of a very successful program. What was more or even equally meaningful about it was that this also allowed the university to let down their guard for a moment and now to put on display, not just crosswalks to show how we had achieved things, showing alignments with standards, but to show what did those tangible evidence or what did the tangible evidence look like? And then was that the same evidence that a district person would expect to see? Agree. And as we sat down and we reviewed the program currently in place, which was a successful program, we began to see the deficiencies in the fact of we were able to target areas where we felt our principals needed a better experience to be prepared for their position. And some of that included the school improvement piece, the cultural responsiveness piece, the trauma-informed care piece. Those were the beginning of conversations and the beginning of building that trust and that relationship that we truly were in this together. And no one was saying that one, the university or the districts owned this, that it was a partnership for us to grow and support leaders that would begin with our four, our three school districts, but would continue to grow and expand throughout Virginia. Now, now, now just to add, to, to make sure, the program was actually very successful, but we all knew that we had room for improvement. And being able to see things from my district partner's eyes or from their lens was very meaningful. 
And I will say as a district partner, that was a little bit of the frustration that we experienced. We felt like we had so much to offer our universities for their program design, but the conversation really wasn't being initiated on either side. And it was only within a month of having that conversation with our superintendent that the Wallace Foundation grant was made available and that we partnered with Virginia State. And we're seeing as we're having this conversation with Virginia State, other universities are seeing the work and the approach that we've taken and you're seeing those conversations being beginning to spread throughout the state. So when you think about our approach, this is actually a, um, a figure from the New York Leadership Academy uh, who served as one of our um, consultants. Um, this actually dictates or, or describes very well what we did. We aligned everything to clear and regular, rigorous school leadership standards. We made sure that we simulated authentic work of school leaders, emphasizing job embedded experiences. And we did this with the help of our district partners. We made sure that our program reflected the local context of leadership needs of the districts. We kind of identified those as the five problems of practice most needed by our districts to improve student achievement. We cultivated teamwork to, to promote sustainable school improvement, and we ensured that the leaders developed the skills needed to confront and address the issues related to equity. And that's one of the reasons our theme or the, the theme of our program was cultural responsive leaders and trauma informed. Now, none of this would be uh, complete if there wasn't a way to help continue the improvement process. So Tim mentioned the leader tracking system. And so Virginia State envisioned a leader tracking system that would provide program data on the preparedness of its graduates to include the effectiveness of its coursework and internship experience and a compilation of disaggregated graduate performance data related to and aligned with the state and national standards. This information will be used to, con to promote continuous quality improvement. The figure on the right comes from our, our, our exemplary partner, who was Gwinnett County Public Schools Quality Plus Leader uh, Academy. And it shows how the cycle uh, of data continues to help the school improvement process, in, in particular, the university improvement process for its programs. This figure actually shows the first official leader tracking system developed by our other district partner, Sussex County Public Schools for Virginia. And with each, it's a part of the UPPI, each district partner is required to create a leadership tracking system. And that may look different for each division based on the needs of that division. And this work really is a result of the principal preparation initiative and the five school divisions who worked in that grant to help launch the work that we've done in the next iteration of the Wallace work in the UPPI. So ultimately all of our work gets back to the child. The vision of the Board of Education in Virginia and the Superintendent of Public in Instruction in cooperation with their partners is to create an excellent statewide system of public education that derives strength from diversity and it ensures equity of opportunity for each student. In a safe and healthy learning environment that prepares all students to be capable, responsible, and self-reliant citizens in the global society. And while we initially were talking about the university preparation program, it's also important to recognize the need of continued conversation. For example, Henrico County has worked a great deal on our Henrico Learner Profile, which is aligned with the Virginia profile of a graduate. Virginia State University needs to have an understanding and awareness of the work that we're doing as they're preparing our future leaders to be able to step into the schools and really begin to do the work that was already, has already started. Well, at that time, uh, this, this uh, concludes our formal presentation. Uh, and, and I think this is a time in which we will turn it back over to Joe for our question and answer session. Thank you. Uh, I do have a, a question here. Um, and I direct it to any one of our panelists. To what extent 
does your district partner with local universities for pre-service principal preparation before the UPPI? That's a great question, and I'll answer that from Franco. We have several universities that are a bit closer to us in proximity than Virginia State University. But through this Wallace Grant, we have built a partnership with Virginia State that will sustain long after the grant is no longer available. So I will say there will be a significant increase in the number of Henrico candidates participating in the program at Virginia State University. And so this is a new, a relatively new partnership uh, and a very mm -hmm. strong partnership. And I also wanted to um, just make a comment on the difference between relationships and partnerships or acquaintances. Mm -hmm. I think most universities and districts have some type of relationship, but they may not be authentic relationships and it may not be at the level of partnership that we're talking about. Most universities uh, don't have the districts come in and a system in course redesign in the way that we have. Um, most university districts may not do cross training the way that, that we have. And so I think a lot of times we have relationships that are on the uh, exterior, but the type of partnerships that we are building uh, really talks to the nature of a learning continuum and building learner-centered communities. It's important to note when you have the universities, as Tim spoke of, of having buy-in because they are a part of the process and they are a part of the progress moving forward, you know that the university is investing in the needs of your division. And so with that, you know what the program looks like, you are participating, whether it's as adjunct faculty or if you are just serving in different capacities, we will, Henrico County will have a, a presence in the university program moving forward. And so we can be comfortable sending our candidates through the program, knowing they will be prepared for the principalship. Tim? Thank you. Yeah, I would say um, we have a mix. Some of the partnerships, particularly the Northeast Consortium, have existed for over a decade now. Um, and others like Wake County has been more informal, but the Wallace Initiative allowed us to formalize that relationship. And I would say, to Robert's point, when you're working on co-constructing curriculum together and leadership standards, it really changes the nature of the partnership um, where you feel invested in it. Um, and it has been a powerful experience to be able to be a part of the process and see it through different lens. So we're not only now looking through our division, but we're also looking through the lens of our partner districts as well as the university. I think we have time for one more question. Um, what has been the benefit of a strong university district partnership on the entire learning continuum? And what is the potential impact on student uh, achievement? Um, this is um, Sylvia with the NEWA Consortium. And um, one of the, I, I feel, one of the um, strongest benefits or the largest benefit for us is knowing that um, we are going to have quality leaders lead the program because we, we are designing the coursework in collaboration. Um, we're continuously revising and reviewing what the needs are of the district and because we do have um, an opportunity to participate in the courses that are presented, um, it just strengthens our partnership and we make sure that we are meeting the needs of our, our students. Um, by building those strong leaders. And I agree. It, it, it is the communication piece, but it's also knowing that the, that the university values the input from the division and they're taking that input and they're actually putting that into their program and we're seeing that in practice. The greatest value that we are going to find is that we truly are looking at those relevant, authentic practices that our graduates are going to experience. So we are truly moving from that theory to practice, and that was the missing element. And, and I guess my final word would be the greatest, the, the, the greatest impact 
will be that our high need schools, where our children need the most um, support, they need uh, principals who are able to not only be uh, building leaders, but to help be instructional leaders to make sure that they can receive what they need when they need it. When we can do that and our students can thrive, then I think that's what success will be. And that's what I believe by impacting the learning continuum. I think that gets us one step closer. And I think it's also important to note that it's not just the partnership between the districts and the university. This is a partnership between the universities as well, and they're learning and growing from one another. That makes our district stronger, and that will benefit our students. Okay. Thank you all so very much for your time this afternoon. Robert, would you please advance the final slide here, and we'll wrap up for today. And I'd like to extend an invitation to join your colleagues for the 2019 National Principals Conference, sponsored by NASSP. July 18th through 20th, 2019, in Boston. You can learn more about the conference and register at the address shown on this slide, www.principalsconference.org. Thank you all so very much for joining us this afternoon. That concludes Thank you our program. Thank you all. Thank you.